you were watching a hit tv empowering you hello everyone watching us out there thank you so much for following up the campaign thank you so much for your support you have kept us moving day and day and we know that we are doing it for the good of our own community once again this is bridget bridget in cementa and the minister of gender and guidance at mass and i am humbled to always bring to you ideas that are going to change your life ideas that are going to build you and today i am humbled i am delighted to be with people from different faculties within the university these are our own students people with brilliant minds the ambitious leaders of the university you are humble i am humbled to have you here uh as we run this campaign we have set strategies that we've been following every day every night We've been working so hard so that this can come true, it can come to reality. And we can do something that will build the community, that can change someone's life in the community. And then today, since it is the last day that we are tackling on the campaign, which has been birth control and reproductive health, and how to end the unwanted pregnancies, I was able to invite these leaders so that they can share their minds about this how to put an end to unwanted pregnancies it is the main problem that is in the country at the moment unwanted pregnancies teenage pregnancies but oh my god today we're gonna put it to an end ah uh, on my left is mr witness veda i am humbled to have you here Thank you very much, and I'm also exceedingly humbled to be on this show today. Thank you. That is so great. And then on my right, I'm Myra Stewart, commonly known as Stewart Gates. That is so great. You are welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm Isaac Muyandia, and uh, it's my pleasure to be here. On our show. Thank you for inviting me. And I am also humbled because you honored my invitation to come. So as we proceed, this is going to be, this is a discussion that we are going to hold, the four of us, and I know that it's going to help you out there. And I wanted us to see it from this perspective of men. I have been hosting ladies for this show. I have been hosting different students, engaging different female students in the university, but I hadn't gotten a chance of engaging gentlemen. You understand so starting with uh uh mr stewart yes how do men look how do men define unwanted pregnancies well i would say everyone could be having their own definition but i think an unwanted pregnancy could be that pregnancy that comes at unprecedented time at that unprepared time at a time when someone is not yet prepared anyone could 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 you could find someone at 30 years getting pregnant but mm -hmm. they feel that it has come in an unwanted time okay that is what we refer to as an unwanted pregnancy okay that yeah. is that is good mr muyanja how what do you think is unwanted pregnancy according to you that was according to him. How do you look at unwanted pregnancies? Well, um, next guy is speak. Unwanted pregnancy is uh, from the definition itself something uh, unprepared for. Okay. Yeah, so it comes at a time when someone is not ready for it, and therefore they just baptize it as unwanted. As unwanted. So there's, uh, there's, there's no big. There's no big definition that can attach to it. It's, it's as plain as it looks. It comes at a time when it's unprepared for and, uh, the, the people that are responsible, therefore, they are unwanted. Okay. The unwanted pregnancy, the rate at which they're increasing is very high. I don't know why this is happening, especially in this COVID-19 pandemic era. So you get different cases from different media platforms. All that is happening is the teenage pregnancy, the unwanted pregnancy. But I feel like it can be put to an end. Oh, Mr. Beda Witness, how do men deal with the unwanted pregnancies? First of all, unwanted pregnancies indeed come with unwanted pressure yes. to the man. Mm. 
yeah, it's pressure that you've not, it's something you've not prepared for. You're just there and you're being told, hey, I didn't see my period this month. Something like that. You really didn't prepare for it and you start panicking. Some people now start to suggest options like, can we actually terminate this pregnancy? Yeah, some people start thinking of the will be caretakers of the baby, maybe if they are still in school. Yeah, you may be thinking, you'd be like, I think uh, we can continue and help the baby, but since we can't take care of the baby, then maybe we can have someone that will take care of the baby, maybe one, maybe uh, the grandparent from either side and something like that. So basically it comes with unnecessary pressure. Like it's called unwanted pregnancy. It comes with a lot of unwanted things, unexpected things, unprecedented challenges. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are live on AET TV platforms. That is YouTube and Facebook. And I know for every viewer out there, you are waiting for what the gentlemen in the house are going to discuss today. Uh, Samoyanja. Who is to blame for these unwanted pregnancies? Well, um, there is a plethora of, uh, of factors that come into play for unwanted pregnancies to come, to come into play. Uh, to begin with, uh, uh, before, um, before we got into this pandemic, uh, we were talking about, uh, in South Saharan Africa, we were talking about 28% of uh let, let, let me let me let me take right down to maybe uh teenage girls in this case uh, we were talking about 28 percent of uh teenage girls getting pregnant and of course that's unwanted because at that age no one really is used to get pregnant uh to bring it down to uganda we are talking about 25 percent of girls getting pregnant uh, unwanted, and that means if we bring it in perspective, that is one, one in four girls, one in four young girls are getting pregnant. Uh, of course, when we also make it wider, we look at rural and urban. You're looking at it happening more in rural areas, and therefore we are supposed to look at the factors of who to blame in that kind of perspective. Who to blame in rural? Who to blame in urban areas? There are factors, environmental, there are personal factors, there are show factors, but of course political and economic factors. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we look at it, we are supposed to discuss economical factors, political factors, social factors, and personal factors, environmental factors. The case in point, if we are uh, in a, a home where uh, we are having less of a we are having less of support coming from from the parents and they look at this uh this girl as a, a commodity so unfortunate they look at, at, at this young girl as a commodity where they think there can be a quid pro quo you give uh you go in for maybe some uh, irrational sexual practices so that in the end we can have uh, something for on our plate that is a very major factor in rural areas and also the cultural settings where some people think that they pride a lot in getting uh maybe in uh they pride a lot in observing these marriage practices at any age they pride a lot in being able to get by price at any age at any stage and therefore they tend to fix some of these young girls into these practices and they end up getting such unwanted pregnancies of course there's also a, a, a case of uh, lack of knowledge lack of access to birth control measures lack of access to knowledge most importantly people don't know what to do when as regards sexual education and that also comes at a personal level do parents deal with things when students go to schools do schools teach these things so um it's a it, it's a wide it's a wide it's a wide factor it's a wide array of factors that we can look at that are, can lead to these unwanted pregnancies thank you oh thank you so much mr Muyanja. Uh, when I was reading the Daily Money in the Daily Monitor, I've been following up these cases of unwanted pregnancies, and I see the most blame is put on parent on parents. The the point in, in case, the point is that there is a lot of poor parenting apparently, and that's why charity begins at home. Oh, okay, okay, yes. okay, okay. Then to Mister 
Stuart, yes. What do you think about that? Who is to blame for the unwanted pregnancies that are increasing in community? Well, uh, to begin with, the point we have ended with, yes, yes. Uh, the script you read in Daily Monitor, mm -hmm. well, uh, people are just trying to, 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 to keep away from reality. Well, that could be another factor, but to a smaller extent, for a child upbringing. But during this period, I think the biggest blame should be on the government. Why? Okay. Because just like the Bible says, an idle mind is the devil's worship. I think and I believe that these teenage girls have just been idle, that mm. they lacked what to do, such that they resorted to that. Yes, to a smaller extent, their parents could be also blamed for, for, for that, but I think uh, the, the factor that, uh, uh, that the government led to the closing up of schools, these children have been idle, and I think it is what has pushed them into that, because you find that they are doing nothing, such that they, they, they have a lot of time for to, to, to maybe to relate with boys or big men, whatever it is. So I think mainly it is to blame on the government that the schools have been locked. That could be the, the main factor for the rise in teenage pregnancies during this time. Children have been so much idle. Okay. Yes. But then, uh, even when they're in schools, yes. sometimes we report these cases of teenage pregnancy. Yes. Um, Does it still, do we still blame the state or the government for that? That is why I say to a large extent, because during this time, mm. teenage pregnancies have so much increased compared okay. to, to, to the previous years or to the previous days because okay. of idleness. But on the other side, mm. it should be also blamed to the to the parents as well. Mm. Lack of sensitization. Okay. They don't sensitize their children mm. about the, 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 the outcomes, the consequences. So I think the parents, the children themselves, but to a large extent, mm. it should be blamed to the government. Okay. Yes. I think you've had the two different opinions from two different speakers. And Sabeda, what do you think? Whom should we blame for these unwanted pregnancies? Uh, it's so many people to blame here. But uh, majorly I'll put the blame on the parents in okay. the first place. Okay. And then it even goes back to our schools, even the religious community and all that. Uh, when they wanted to teach sexual education, mm. uh, re religious leaders were so much against it. But okay. I think the world has grown to a point where people can no longer separate sex from relationships. Yes. And relationships are going to be there forever. Yes. So I think uh, we can no longer keep these uh, teenagers from uh, engaging in sex. So we need to shift our attention to how do they actually get into sex, but are still safe as far as unwanted pregnancies are concerned. So basically we are shifting from uh, entirely praying itself by abstaining into actually going smart. <laughs> okay. Yeah, honestly, we shall need to go smart. How do we go smart? Going smart is uh, maybe bringing in an element of uh, birth control measures. Wow. Yeah. If you are going to do sex, if you can't avoid it, well, we have to f reach the going self, abstaining. But if you can't avoid it, then uh, make sure you're safe, you're protected. Something like that, basically. Okay. So basically, the brain is on the, on the parents, on the curriculum that is put the students in school that doesn't actually teach them about real life when it comes to handling sexuality mm. and uh, even on the on the on the teenagers themselves or anyone that engages into uh, into sex and is not ready to hold a pregnancy okay. basically that okay thank you so much uh so i've had different opinions now i want to know how do men deal with these unwanted pregnancies? It has always been on the side of ladies. And you know, it is left to the lady, if I get pregnant, then I suffer the consequences. But then how do these men deal with the consequences? 
after all I can never I cannot be a single mother simply because there is a man who owns this pregnancy that I'm holding so how do men deal with these pregnancies or how should they deal with these pregnancies and plan for pregnancies yes okay thank you uh maybe be with you before you could go as far as uh, handle the pregnancy mm. so there's something uh, uh uh, the previous speaker talked about yes, yes. as we get the uh, birth control and uh, bring it into uh, maybe young girls. Well, I would, uh, I would advise, okay, I would think that that would be uh, somehow a second line of control in a uh, first line of control among the maybe the adults. But for the young girls, uh, I would think the most important element that we would need, uh, we talked about the paradigm shift that we are having, mm. is the education on how, like I, I would agree with him on how to go about it. But as regards birth control, I would still insist that we keep it, uh, we keep it for, for the adults. Yes, first forward, uh, as regards, uh, as, as regards what we're supposed to do in an event of unwanted pregnancy, we need to man up. Okay. We need to man up and own this. Every time man does anything, they need to be responsible for it. Period. There's no shortcut to that, and there's no there's no option to that. Once yes. you do something, you need to be responsible. That is the definition of men. Wow. We don't want we don't want males who who, who pretend to be men. Okay. We want men who are men. Period. Thank you. Wow, that is so interesting. So, so Stuart, what is about that? Well, for to 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 hold accountable for the how how do men like take this? Yes. How should they deal with it? Well, I won't so much differ from what my colleague has said. Mm. Everyone should be, first of all, held accountable, but most importantly, all men should be responsible for the activities they do. There is no yeah. shortcut to that, it is just responsibility. Yes. And responsibility is not taught in school, it is not taught where, mm. but it is, it is natural. Okay. To someone so no one will teach you responsibility mm. you just have to, to to be responsible in whatever you do okay yes uh as we okay how do how does what takes one to be a responsible father what should one do so that the whole community can see that yes this one is playing their role right Like do men, yes, you talked about men should man up, they should take up the responsibility. But what are those activities that a man will do? And yes, the whole community will recognize that yes, he's doing their roles at the moment. To begin with, I think a responsible, the first sign of a responsible man, it is to be in, in, in clear and certified marriage. So I think for a man to be having a family, that is the first sign of responsibility. You cannot, that is why sometimes they say that sex outside marriage is is, is not okay. Mm. Because the first sign of responsibility, how can you be sure that this person is responsible or will be responsible for the pregnancy if you're not in marriage? That is the first sign and the first step of responsibility. Okay. If you have a family to take care of, that would be a, a, a sign to the entire community that this man is responsible. Imagine the pregnancy that one is holding is out of defilement or rape. So what is your say about that? Still should a man continue and marry this young lady and then play the responsibilities of a father? Well, we should not think about that. Okay. Rather, we should think about how to to minimize and how to prevent and eradicate completely okay. such cases of defilement and rape. Okay. We should not give them a chance that if you have raped someone or defiled someone, it should be like this and that should be eradicated completely. Okay. The option should not be there. Yes, please. Uh, that was a case recently in Kenya, mm. uh, in Meru. Mm. Uh, and uh, it was a case of, uh, uh, if I remember, who it was Judge Morrissey who was uh, the, the High Court judge at that time. Mm. This was a man who had uh, seven years ago got in contact with this young girl who was uh, uh, 16 then mm. and they gave birth to a child. Mm. So 
there was a case that was filed by by the state and the man was prosecuted in 2020 okay. for 15 years and then when the the, the began pleading defense was was claiming that now that the woman is uh uh, above ab above 18 according to section 4 of their marriage act they needed to have been lenient and uh, there was the whole bit of corroboration of evidence but bottom line uh the judge insisted that however much there was however much at, at the moment they were talking about the man being or the, the the girl being above 18 there needed to have been a precedent saint all made that there needn't be any form of or deformment or underage or or this this kind of deformment where we, we have unwanted pregnancy at underage. But the man was able to hold true to his responsibilities. He was able to take care of the child. So what what we would need in this case is what do we do in an event of of of, of, uh, of maybe a, an unwanted pregnancy? How do we take care of the mother? We support them to go for natal care. In an event of the child, do we man up to take care of their early age? We help them in the health care. We help them in uh, uh, the social care. And uh, well, like you said, we need to have uh, an, an ending, uh, an ending solution. But what happens in an event of uh, uncertainty like this? That's the responsibility we need to take over. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Muyanja and Sir Stuart. So as we wind up, I thank you so much for your full participation. I have a question to ask Mr. Beda. Yes, we have talked and we have watched news, we have read uh, stories, we have seen all this. It, it is now like a story, you know, it keeps repeating itself day and night. We talk about unwanted pregnancy, we talk about the strategies that the government has said, but we would like to put this to an end. What do you have to say about this? How do we put an end to this case of unwanted pregnancies? Well, I think that's a cocktail of things to put in place. Okay. One of them is to teach sexuality. Okay. Teaching sexuality is very important. Okay. I will insist on that. It's very important. Mm. You need to teach people how to handle. Okay. And another thing that uh, when it comes to birth control, mm. for me, I think uh, ladies should do the bigger part. Okay. Because, well, it's my, the man is the bearer of the seed. Mm. But uh, even the me methods of uh, birth control that are uh, in place mostly target women. Okay. And I think that's, that is on the rationale that uh, much as the man, of course, bears the seed, mm. uh, th that seed is, uh, is good for nothing if it doesn't find a fertile ground. Mm. So I think that is why even the methods in place target women. So I think women need to be more careful. Okay. Uh, you should not really open yourself to someone that uh, is doing unprotected sex on you if you know you are not protected from your side. If you know you are not using a birth control method, then uh, demand that you should use birth control method, let's say a condom. Okay. Yeah, basically that. It's thank just you. about responsibility. Okay, thank you so much. One word to the viewers and then we can call it a show. Starting with Sir Stuart. Well, the viewers, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for watching. And the message to all the teenage girls out there, the biggest solution to all this would be abstaining. Uh, live along birth control, things, okay, they would come, but leave that for, for the people past the teenage age. To you teenage girls, abstaining is the only solution. Abstain totally, completely. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, my last word to our viewers and thank you for being with us. I would want us to hold true to the values that bind us as humans. If you are a man, why would you want to defile a young girl? That is not humanity. If you are a mother, you own this child. If you are a father, you own this child. Why would you send this child into early marriage? If you are the government, if you are the justice system, why wouldn't you hold accountable the people that do these heinous practices so that we can put 
a jurisprudence or we can put a, a mechanism that will scare away other people that are, are, are in the process of doing these uh, unscrupulous or unputh activities. I therefore want us to remain humans and do things in a humane way. That is what I think we need. Thank you so much for your opinions. Thank you so much for your suggestions. Once again, I thank ATTV for a, for the support for everything, and I thank and appreciate these ambitious leaders that I called upon today, and they were able to turn up and share their ideas to our viewers. Keep watch. It is you to make a choice, and for all those that are facing that are already experiencing the challenges or that are already pregnant at a teenage age or even when they are youth but they were not ready for the pregnancy please take on the responsibility look after your pregnancy and yes let the baby grow give her a chance or give him a chance to see the light of the world because you are you are the mother already and you will not object or yeah it has already happened so Check it up. Thank you so much for watching. I remain Bridget, Bridget in Cement at Mbara University of Science and Technology. Bye. You're watching a Yeet TV empowering you.